Good morning, everybody. It is nice to see everybody once again on this <coughs> beautiful Lord's Day that we can once again assemble here. It's nice to see <coughs> all the smiling faces. It's nice to see John and Erica and uh, Craig from Isa. <coughs> we missed you a couple of weeks ago. Glad you could make it. It's nice to see you. Tani Betty, good luck from Tani to see. And then we've got, uh, you know, the Roy has gone overseas. He's gone to England at the moment. Yes. Eh? He's, he's in London at the moment. So please remember him in your prayers as he travels around Europe. And then um, we've got uh, Markland with his knees. So please remember to continue keeping him in your prayers. And then birthdays, we had Rulan yesterday, day before yesterday. Okay. Then we have got one birthday coming up. It is the 16th of November. And that is John. Right. And then we've got a one anniversary coming up on the... 13th of November, and that is Robin and Marion. Okay. So as far as my announcements go, that is about it. Uh, Bible study resumes, if it's right with Gabby, I only asked Adrian, so I don't know if it's yes. right with Gabby. Yes. She's, is it right with you? Yes. All right. So uh, Bible study resumes at Adrian and Gabby's house. 6.30 on Tuesday. Alright, I hope everybody can still remember where that was. <laughs> if you're not sure, they can just say, can drop you a pen. Uh, <clears throat> any other announcements? Anything I've missed? Uh, Tracy and uh, Brooklyn aren't here this morning. Daniel is not going to be here for the next three weeks. He's going to be working. And uh, anything else? No other announcements. Uh, <clears throat> you've heard the, you saw in the chat, uh, Robert put there a uh, announcement from Balville. Uh, they're looking for prayers for the Riverview congregation. Um, it is still, well, apparently now they, I don't know if you know the whole story, but it's a very long, very sad story, but basically the uh, people that are supposed to be in charge are now being taken to court and having various frivolous charges and so on brought against them. <clears throat> okay, so please remember to keep them in your, in your prayers and as this thing goes to court, as they finally try and sort this whole sad situation out. Right, anything else? <clears throat> no other announcements. All right, <coughs> if there are no other announcements, let us uh, open our morning worship with a word of prayer. Our oh, only Heavenly Father, we are so grateful once again that we can come before your throne of grace and mercy again this morning. Grateful for the beautiful day that you've given to us, for the week that has gone past and the blessings that you've bestowed on us. And as always, Father, looking forward to the week that lies before us, the challenges that may face us, <clears throat> the opportunities that you may lay across our path. We ask that we may use all the opportunities that you make available to us to be able to spread your word, to be able to make contact with people, Father, so that your kingdom in, at this place may be able to grow. Father, we are ever mindful of those that are facing struggles and battles in their lives. We think this morning of those that are struggling with their health, we think of Esmeralda, we think of Marklin, also Aldrin and Gabby that are well on, their road, well on their road to recovery. 
We ask you to continually be with him, Father, restore them to a full measure of health, Father. Father, for those always less fortunate ourselves, we ask that we may be able to help them, Father. As we saw in our lesson for the last, last week, the, those poor we always have amongst us, but you have still given us a mandate to look after them. And Father, especially with those that begin from the household of faith, Father, we are grateful for this opportunity again that you've given to us on this first of the week that we can gather here together without fear of or danger of any kind. Lord, that we come before you and worship you because of who you are, all of your mighty works, all of your the creation, everything that we see all around us each and every day. Father, we are grateful for everyone that is present here this morning. We think of those that could not be with us. We think of Leroy traveling around in Europe. We ask you to be with him and to grant him safe and tra traveling mercies as he moves around that area. And Father, to be with us this morning that you will guide us and that you will lead us in everything that we do. That our worship to you this morning may be acceptable in your sight. And this is our prayer with thanksgiving and in Jesus' name. Amen.
really touching my knees, um, with healing hands. Thank you for the prayers and the messages that came from the brothers and sisters. Thank you so much. It made it possible for me to receive the healing and stand here. But no kiris standing here in front of me. Um, so the scripture this morning is from the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 11, and this time around, verses 30 to 31. Although I'll also be making reference to scriptures in the book of James. Staying with the theme of um, the Lord's Table, which I presented for those who remember previously, it's a theme of caution theme of warning and a theme of discernment of om te onderzoek of om te onderscheid. So as ons 1 Kronieke or 1 Korintiërs 11 vers 30 lees, dit is waarom daar baie swak is en siek is onder julle is en julle wat onder julle reeds oorlede is as ons onszelf echter vooraf onderzoek, zal ons niet onder God's oordeel komen. Maar, zelfs als ons God's oordeel in discipline moet verdienen, zal ons niet samen met die wereld veroordeeld worden. In English, verse 30, that is why many, of, many among you are weak and sick. And a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So, brothers and sisters, Whenever I prepare the Lord's table, I ask myself, how can I use this opportunity to encourage God's children? According to me, the opportunity at the Lord's table is one of self-reflection. It's one of self-improvement. It's a holy platform, a spiritual platform where you can communicate with God through Jesus whilst adhering to the mandatory participation of this Holy Sacrament. This Holy Sacrament is a divine procedure of written here that was instituted by Jesus Christ Himself, not by an apostle or disciple. But the main character in our lives, for those who are Christians, he is the main character in our lives, he is the perfecter of our faith. So the part of the scripture which we've read is clear, self-explanatory. We see that if we do not discern ourselves, looking inwardly, before partaking of the Lord's table, there are clear consequences. That is why we are sick at times. That is why we are weak. And also, that is why some of us has fallen asleep. So how do we use this opportunity to discern ourselves? To avoid these kinds of judgment? So previously, if you guys can remember, I refer to a useful procedure in the Old Testament where David in Psalm 51 applied. This time around, I want to highlight the stern guidance in the book of James. Now the book of James, believed to be written by the brother of Jesus, is probably the oldest book in the New Testament. And James was speaking to the early Christians which were scattered all over the nations. Most likely the time after Stephen's death, where back then still Saul and his cronies was hunting all the newly converted Christians. 
So in James 1 verse 19, he says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to be angry. So the first step is listen. Listen carefully. <coughs> and slow to speak doesn't mean you must say the word slow to speak. It basically means <coughs> just put a delay on your response. First, interpret and comprehend how to respond. Slow to be angry can be interpreted that you must increase your tolerance levels. Maybe give them another chance before I go to anger. Maybe ask again, are you sure? For me personally, this scripture goes hand in hand into one of the, the last fruits of the Spirit, which is called self-control. You choose not to respond. You choose to wait and consider what you say. It's something that I'm struggling with at times, and I think all of us do, but it's important to improve on a daily basis. And then, slow to be angry, verse 20, because you, human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. I've written here, have you ever thought to yourself after an angry outburst, I shouldn't have done said that. I could have done it in a different way. Well, this scripture confirms our guilt. God does not approve of human anger. And then we'll stop at verse 21. Therefore, Get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. This world's morals, the standards of our current society, those in which evil is prevalent. In common law they call it the reasonable man's test. What will a reasonable man do? How will a reasonable man react? The scripture says get rid of all of that. Go to the Bible. Go to the word of God. That will save you. Or it can save you. So you should go there and apply what you read. So God will save you through His Word. You will not be saved if you have good morals. You will definitely not be saved if you are a reasonable person. So my encouragement to all of us here this morning, let us discern ourselves to follow the directive James describes. Shall we pray for you? Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for dying for us. Whilst we were ungodly, whilst we were sinners and powerless. As we partake of the bread which symbolizes your body, Lord, help us to discern ourselves. We pray this in Jesus' name.
Lord Jesus, we also pray for a blessing on the cup, the fruit of the vine. As we partake of the cup this morning, help us to remember that it's only by the blood of Jesus that sins can be forgiven. We ask, please forgive our sins we knew this morning. And as we partake, Lord, <coughs> help us to be quick to listen, slow to respond, and slow to become angry. We pray in your son's name. Good morning, church. It is really, really good to be back and to see so many of the good old acquainted faces. I bring greetings from Perth, Australia, and also Port Elizabeth, who we visited with our brothers and sisters all over the globe, and I must say, they do things differently. And we had the Lord's stable with him, and even this, they do things differently. But then it is quite a good statement to make to say they also do things exactly the same. It is good to be in the Lord's church. It is good to be able to worship with one another. And even though the way that they present the Lord's stable and the way that they bring the fruit of the vine across and the bread is different and specifically in Perth and wait and everybody's going to take a piece of the bread and they eat it together at the same time etc. But anyway my plea is just this morning to never ever walk away from the Lord's church. Never ever forsake your God. You cannot walk away from the church and not walk away from Christ. They are one and the same. They are the body and the head. We were pretty ill on our return. I must say that my head is still swimming. But the Lord will be with me and guide me. We have put up many, many prayers and when we were sick, the amount of messages that we got from each one of you sitting in this congregation today has been remarkable. It is actually breathtaking and breathtakingly beautiful. Remember that the Lord's Church is the oldest church in all of the world. It was built 2,000 years ago by Jesus Himself. Christ said that I will build my church. There's not a single one of us here that can't go Matthew 16, 18, when Christ built the church. We all know Acts chapter 1 and the power in Jerusalem for the power of the Lord's church. There is no other foundation that anybody can lay except that it was laid by Christ Himself. I just want to reiterate to each and every one of us that Jesus Christ is the head of the body. We are nothing without Christ. We are without Christ dead. I want to be able to encourage everybody today to realize that we are here and worshiping God together because we 
are here to give, but we are also here to receive. We don't come to church because of the infamous statement that is always made, but I get nothing out of it. And what do we answer? But you are not supposed to be getting out of anything out of it. You are supposed to be giving. I hear a lot of murmurs about people that are exactly the same as me. I've given that answer many, many times. But it is not in exclusive truth. Because each one of us has come to this worship assembly this morning to also receive. It is reciprocal. We would like to share with what we get. We would like to feel and to sense God's presence. We would like to be able to experience God. Hebrews 10, 24, 25, 26, etc. is such an extremely used verses in the Bible. And it is not there to encourage one or another or to wrap one another with the knuckles about thou shalt not forsake the assemblies. Alright? That is just a beginning. That is certainly not what is meant. I think it is more meant thou shalt not make a habit of missing. It is a warning not to quit to be coming and attending the Lord's church. It is there for us to encourage one another to never quit coming to the Lord's church. It is here where we will sense a sense of God's presence. We are supposed to be here to encourage one another and everything that you give, others will receive. When you receive, it is because someone else gave. We do not come to church because of our magnificent buildings. I know that the Roman Catholic Church did quite a good job of this when Gabby and I went overseas and you look at some of these older buildings, especially as what Leroy will be experiencing now in those church buildings, you actually get goose flesh when you walk in there and you just look at the awe of the building. But this is not God. We are spiritual. The Bible is pretty clear that we do not get any upliftment and any God's presence through any material things, but rather through spiritual things. It is not the divine nature of gold and silver, an image to be formed by the art of men. We can do nothing, but we can produce God by our own spiritual thought to what we give to what we hand out and the way that we worship God. We all know John chapter 4 verse 24 and quote it regularly about that. We will worship God in spirit and in truth. In our experience, we cannot melodramatize this by music, by buildings, by drama or dance or the architecture. We worship God in a way that is written in the scriptures for us. The Bible is very clear that we will worship God in spirit. The first century church, it is very clear that we read, especially the book of Acts, that they did not get together in fancy buildings. They did not have instrumental events. They did not have tent meetings and all fire buckets for the money to be collected, etc. They did not have faith healing shows anywhere or any of these things to experience a God-like feeling. But it is from within. It is from each and every one of us how we determine how we will serve God. And yet, without any of their public rallies, the apostles they would die for their faith. They would choose to serve God and they were ready to die. And many did. We need this God-like experience 
in everything that we do. We come to church and worship service to feel the presence of God. Each one of us, when we sit down and we worship God, we are doing it with everything that we have. They were close historically to Jesus. They lived with Jesus. Corinthians 15 tells us that over 500 saw him. But we see Jesus through our worship. Because Christ has chosen emblems in which to serve him, in which to revive him. We thank Marcelin for the eloquent way in which you led the table. Marcelin, thank you. It is an occasion like this when we can truly draw nearer to God. They were close because the apostles were their teachers in Acts chapter 2. We are here because we, each one of us, and Raymond, with the absolute amount of information, Raymond, that you put in your lessons, I'm always sit down there in awe of your lessons and thank you. This is what we get out of lessons. We need to be fed and it is up to us to listen, to sit attentively and to put down our best foot because we want to be here. We want to experience God and Jesus in John 49 I have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Our church experience is to experience the Father. Our experiences does not go on feeding on emotions. The death, burial, and resurrection is not in our generation, but we do have the commemoration of it through the communion, as Martin has led us this morning. The teachings of the apostles, they are preserved in the Bible times, and conviction grows as we learn and as we apply. Everything that is said and everything, the scriptures that we repeat here, is for us to apply to our lives. The blood of the cross was built 2,000 years ago. But it is as effective today as what it was then. Sin is sin. A lying tongue is a lying tongue. Whether the blood of Christ washed those liars clean 2,000 years ago just because they saw Him is exactly the same as today. We will experience God if we want to. If our attitudes are right, if we work on our own faith, the forgiveness and the blood of Christ has never changed. The return is as imminent as it ever was. We know that in the Old Testament and in the Apostle times, they lived as though they could die tomorrow. They lived, they believed that Christ was coming back to fetch us and to take us back into heaven one day. That is as sure today as what it was then. We do not have any promise of tomorrow. His return must be on the foremost of our thoughts at all times. When we leave the building, we must live a Christian life. We must live as though we expect His return. Today is all we have. We have not been promised. If we want to experience Christ, we need to give. We need to give so that others may receive. Others will receive because we do and vice versa. When we come to church, a second pointer on receiving is a sense of direction. It is the work of each and every preacher and teacher to continually feed the flock. And everybody sitting here this morning is entitled to receive something out of this lesson. Whether it be motivation, whether it be an encouragement, and even whether it be a reprimand. We are not to make light of these things. We are supposed to teach and you are supposed to receive. 
at a point, a lesson must have a so what to it. It must be completely within our grabs and understanding to be able to say, so what? So what is the purpose? So what are you trying to say? And it is for us, when we stand behind this pulpit, is to see to it that you have a point into receiving, into having a purpose as when Jesus preached. Christ preached with a purpose. He came to earth for, with a purpose. It is so that people may believe. It is so that people may repent. And it is that people would follow and also that they are comforted. There are people that have illness, there are people not feeling well, there are people at home today because they are not feeling well and because they have problems. I think of Tracy and Brooklyn permanently. We do not understand that the problems that Tracy and young Brooklyn is going through. I do not believe that we actually understand. They are living literally just from one day to the next with nothing to be looking forward to for the next day and most often even not even food to eat for the next day. We need to continually pray for them. We need to continually understand and give. It is mandated to us. We come to church to be equipped. 2 Timothy 3, 16 verse 17 is the famous one that we always use. That scripture is inspired by God and it is profitable for teaching, for approval, correction, for training, for righteousness, so that the man of God will be adequately equipped for the good work. And it is up to us to understand that we need to hear, we need to grow, and we need to eventually become teachers and preachers of the gospel and to continue at an alarming rate to spread the gospel of Christ. God has given the government the responsibility to protect our societies. God has given the family the responsibility to establish homes where Gabby's favorite song, Give Each Family Christian Homes. But God has given the church the responsibility to spread the gospel, to seek and to save the lost. It is the church's responsibility to keep the saved saved. It is the church's responsibility to understand that we need to grow and that we need to understand that there are people out there looking for the gospel. There are people out there that has turned their backs on Christ. There are people out there that has walked away from the gospel. There are people out there that are not worshipping with us this morning because of whatever reasons and strifes and problems they have. But it is only within the church. God is going to come to fetch His church. And we need to understand this. We need to understand the earnestness and the seriousness of the work of the church and of each and every one of us where we have to put in our best where we do and by our showing show that we are serious so that the next person may grow it is by our own attitudes it is how we show that we want to be a church we want to be here we want to encourage we want to learn we want to put on a decent attire, dress code. Maybe not quite correct for me, but I'm going to address something that I saw in the Port Elizabeth church last Sunday morning when I worshipped with them. There was a young girl there that was, she left more of her clothes behind in the wardrobe than what she brought with her to church. I personally believe it's a disgrace. I'm sorry to add this in there this morning. We need to be able to come to church like we want to be there. 
like we are dressed because we are confronting the King. We are worshipping Jesus Christ, our King. We want people to be able to see what a model you are. You are dressed for the occasion. You act like you want to be here. And we need to, be under, we need to understand that everything pertaining to the Lord's Church is holy, is good, is perfect. It is Christ's Church. It is His institution that we are sitting in here. We don't come here in wishing, washing like we've actually come out of the wash. Uh, we need to understand that what we give and the light that we shine and whatever we show people is what they will see, what they will learn and what they will adopt. A last point. I do believe that we need to be able to feel a sense of belonging. This church, the Lord's church, you belong. And you need to feel that you belong. Claim it, stake it, act it, and then make sure that everybody else feels that they belong. Help others to understand. Maybe make this their family. Bring them into the family. Make them feel part of the family. People move on like crazy nowadays. Families move on. Your own children are disappearing. <coughs> Gone are the days where families and mothers and even grandparents used to live with you. Because everybody is just moving. And what do we have left? We have Christ in common. We have the church. That is what we have left. We need to understand that we can't chase, especially the teenagers, away with internet friends and cell phone friends. Because that seems to be the big trend today. The internet and a cell phone. Have you ever seen anybody go to work and slam on brakes because they forgot their Bible behind? But we have far too many times seen people slam on brakes and make U-turns because you forgot your cell phone. We cannot go to work without our cell phone. We cannot go to anywhere without our cell phone. Take your Bible with you, friends, brothers and sisters. Take your Bible with you as well and slam on that car's brakes when you have forgotten your Bible. We need to make people feel welcome in the church. We need to see people's needs in church. We need to be aware, each and every one of us, to each and every other one of us, to make them feel welcome. Greet one another with a holy kiss. We must see to people's needs and that they are used. Make them feel useful. Daniel, thank you for putting on the kettle. You are very useful. <laughs> the Jerusalem church, <clears throat> we can understand that they were eating in each other's homes. They were looking after each other. They sold their goods to meet each other's needs. They were teaching each other. And people were sent to preach and to teach and to feed the poor. Everybody was welcome. Everybody was made feel legitimate in Christ's church. God's love and presence needs to be felt in this congregation. We need to feel that we are in the presence of God. We need to get direction in our lives. We need to understand that from the pulpit, when things touch a nerve, understand that we even need to reprimand you once in a while. And I pray to God that I too, when we move off and when I move off direction, that you will reprimand me 
that you will come and see me and talk to me because we need direction. Everybody needs directions. We need to understand when people are flaunting and pouring and throwing poisonous darts that we need to recognize that. There is no place for arrogance and poisonous darts in the Lord's church. There is no place for this. But there is only place for the humble in heart, for those who understand that they can allow you to feel important. Be humble in your approach to somebody. Make the other person feel more important than what you are. Make them feel good and make them feel that they belong. It is not for us to invent our own worship services. It is not for us to invent musical, classicals, etc. But it is a leadership that Christ wants that will be humble, that will understand that we need a God-given public direction. Belonging happens to each and every person to a sense of ownership and responsibility for the church. Lastly, I want to encourage everybody that the next time you go through the book of Acts chapter 2, read with it Joel chapter 2. Go through the book of Joel and understand that God says, return to me. <coughs> we all know the scripture in, I think it is 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. The, the Lord calleth for you, he who seeks my face, and he who prays and call upon my name, I will heal his land. It is a close call to what Job chapter 2 verse 12 is saying. Let us call upon the name of the Lord. And let us understand that as Christians we need to pray for one another, make one another feel important, make them feel a sense of belonging and give them a God-given presence, a feeling that God is with us. Will you pray with me please? Almighty God, Father, I pray that we will all be able to receive something out of this lesson today. Father, that we will understand and that we will call upon your name, that we will feel that we are in your presence, that we will cast our minds, Father, only on things that are said, on things that are in the scripture, and that, Father, that we will be able to love one another from the depths of our heart. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. There is sunshine in my soul today.
just a reminder for us all, Lord, that it's so easy for us to say that we leave the church, but we don't leave Christ. You've just shown us once again that the head and the body cannot be separated. Lord, we, we thank you that we are fortunate, blessed, to be here today, to have partaken in the highlight, not only of the week, but of our lives. The Lord's table. The, the gift that you've given us in the blood of the Lamb. Lord, we are so blessed. We are so honored to be part of your church, to be part of your family. And to know, Lord, that you have blessed us with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to be here, to attend. Lord, we can only say thank. And Lord, we ask that you shall touch our hearts, that our hearts will explode with worship unto you. Just out of the fact that we appreciate the cross, we appreciate that you have done for us. We appreciate what you're still going to do for us. Father, we have so much to be thankful for. So, so much. We can never ever repay you. And the best of all is, Lord, is we are not worthy of all your blessings, yet you bless us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for fellow brothers and sisters. We thank you, Lord, that you brought Adrian and Gabby back safely. We think of all those who are in need of you, your helping hand, your healing hand. Lord, as brothers and sisters, as a church, we just want to just lay them before your feet this morning and know that you will take care of them. You will take care of them, Father. We know that. And, and, and we thank you, Lord, once again. We cannot say it enough. We thank you for all the blessings you shower upon us every day. Be with us as we leave this place, Lord. And bring us back safely next week. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ.